Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you my review of the 18th mystery in the Nancy Drew series, The Phantom of Venice. As usual, my reviews are based on five separate categories. We have plot, characters, setting and design, entertainment and gameplay value, and music and vibe. Each of those categories is scored on a scale of 1 to 10 for a final possible score out of 50, and then I assign a letter grade to each game based on that score as well. So without further ado, let's get into the plot of Phantom of Venice. So this mystery, as the title would suggest, takes place in Venice, Italy. Nancy is contacted by basically the Italian FBI um, because Prudence Rutherford has referred her for this case saying um, that she can help solve the uh, series of thefts that have been going on in Venice. Lately there's been this mysterious phantom thief who has been stealing uh, art and relics from usually these um, I guess luxurious homes in Venice, but not always. Sometimes they're stealing them from uh, historical locations as well and religious locations. But obviously it's a big deal because all of this valuable art is going missing. And Prudence Rutherford loves art and is really upset about this. So she recommends Nancy for this case since she was aware of how much Nancy helped in the Secret of the Scarlet Hand case. And probably by proxy, Danger by Design as well. But mostly Secret of the Scarlet Hand. So Nancy is basically becomes a spy for the Italian FBI while she's in Venice and is tasked with helping them solve this mystery, uh, which is exactly what she does and is, is exactly what the rest of the plot um, goes forward to have Nancy do. Overall, I really enjoy this plot. I think um, it's pretty airtight as far as plots go. There aren't any um, big holes or any big confusions that would need um, more explaining. I think that's really nice. There are a couple subplots, but really not many. Honestly, I can really only think of like one or two subplots, and the subplots are totally linked to just the um, the characters themselves and their relationships that they have with others and their pasts. So they're kind they're there's subplots there, but they aren't major ones. It's Nancy is pretty much entirely focused on solving this series of crimes in Venice, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I tend to like it when there's a little bit more of an emphasis on some of the subplots because that makes the plot uh, have a deeper meaning as a whole when you look at everything big picture. Uh, but as far as this plot goes, Nancy does um, definitely stay on task with her assignment, which is to solve these crimes. I wish she would do a little bit more exploring outside of that just to have a little bit more for us to do but overall I think the plot of Phantom of Venice is fantastic so I give it a score of 9 out of 10. Now let's move on to the characters for this game. There are five physical characters. Um, one of them you don't interact with but see and um, one of them you don't interact with as often. But anyway, the characters are Margarita Foberg, who is the owner of the Cod Nascosta, or the uh, place in Venice where Nancy is staying. It's her place. And Prudence kind of hoisted Nancy onto Margarita. And Margarita is a little bit resentful about that. She doesn't want Nancy really staying at the Cod Nascosta. Then there's Helena Berg, who is also staying at the Cod Nascosta, um, visiting Italy. She is a journalist, and she is Nancy's roommate for the duration of her stay in Venice. There's Colin Baxter, who is a um, basically an art restorer, an art restoration person. Um, he is restoring art and mosaics um, and architecture for Margarita at the Conascosta. There is Enrico Tazza, who is the, um, I guess he owns the Casa de, de Giochi or the House of Games, um, but we have to uh, get into contact with him throughout the course of this mystery uh, when we are trying to locate a few uh, goods that have been, let's say, removed from their proper homes. Do with that what you will. Then there's also Antonio Fongo, um, who is a physical character that we never talk to, but we see quite a few times because Nancy's main job that she is given as part of the Italian spy group is to snoop on Fongo. She needs to spy on him, um, keep an eye on what he's doing, and report whatever he does to the Italian, uh, the GDIF, the Italian FBI. 
so those are the characters. Overall, I enjoy the cast of characters. I think um, they are interesting to interact with, and I think this game is definitely more has more emphasis on interacting with characters than other games. Uh, however, because the emphasis is more on the characters, I feel like um, I notice more that their the interactions with them aren't entirely satisfying. None of the characters are particularly likable, except ironically Enrico, who probably shouldn't be the most likable character, but for me, he certainly is. The other ones are all just kind of a little bit off-putting. Uh, even when when you talk to them and they are, seem nice, they all they have these little quirks that make them not very fun to interact with. And I think if they all had um, different personalities, like if there was more of a balance, I think I would like it better but because all of them are a little bit, I mean, Margarita's pretty snarky. Uh, Helena is a little bit condescending at times. Colin has anger issues. So they all have these little things that are just kind of not pleasant to interact with. It would be nice to have a little bit more pleasantry. Uh, there's a series of pretty good phone characters as well. We talked to Prudence, we talked to Ned, Joe Hardy comes up, um, Samantha Quick we talked to very briefly on the phone, uh, Sofia Leparace, our contact with the Italian GDIF. So there are some good characters, but I feel like the interactions are not as satisfying as they could be, especially since the characters uh, are such a big part of this game. I think the interaction, for the most part, is written well, but they're... There could be more filled in and it could be a little bit more more inviting, I would say. So I give characters for this game a 7 out of 10. Now let's move on to the category of setting and design, which takes into consideration where the game takes place and how well the setting is incorporated into the overall mystery itself. So as I mentioned before, this game takes place in Venice, Italy, and the setting is absolutely gorgeous. I mentioned this several times just throughout my walkthrough because I get distracted about how pretty it is. There's they do a really great job designing the architecture of the game. You can see the canals throughout Venice and the water is moving. You see the bricks uh, these exposed bricks and just this old stone that's kind of chipping away in a lot of different places. It feels very old world and very like I would expect Venice to feel if I was ever actually there. You know, you got the stone pathways, the inside of the Ca Nascosta is beautiful. All of the little markets that Nancy visits uh, around the area are quite nice. I wish that we got to see more of the locations in depth because it's lots of little locations that we see kind of scattered throughout that are not quite as, um, quite as, finished I suppose as they possibly could be they're just very quickly you are there and you do one thing there and then you leave it would be more fun if we could look more in depth at those locations but overall that's a relatively small qualm I have because this game is beautifully designed they really portray Venice through the visuals and I absolutely love it so overall I give this game a 9 out of 10 in the category of setting and design next we move on to entertainment and gameplay value which takes into consideration how fun the game is to play and how fun it is to replay. So for this game, um, this is actually where I kind of have the biggest issue with it. Uh, the game is fun to play. I definitely enjoy playing it. It's definitely not a uh, a boring game to play by any means. However, I will say that the structure of the game itself makes it less fun than I think it could be. Because now Nancy is working for the Italian police force, she is told all of her next steps. She is always told what she has to do, which makes it less of a mystery for Nancy and more of a assignment. You know, she has to listen to all of these instructions and carry out the instructions. There's less figuring things out on her own there's less logic required there's less independence so and there's less exploration as a result of that as well in in general throughout this game there is just less to explore there are lots of different locations but at each location you can only look at uh, really at just a few things so you really can't delve into the uh, the spaces as much as I wish that we could because they're so beautiful and I feel like there's so much more that we could find but it all just feels very superficial. There's also quite a lot of tasks in this game that are 
longer than they probably should be. There's a third person puzzle where Nancy has to steal something from a palazzo that takes a very long time. There's a mosaic puzzle that takes a very long time and is literally the same thing for almost 20 minutes. Um, it can get a little bit tedious. And then there's a puzzle at the very end in some water tunnels that um, is nearly impossible to solve without a walkthrough when you're playing it on senior level. Um, so I think it's there are some puzzles that really make this game feel a little more tedious to me than I think it should. And I, th I don't know that a lot of detectives get the same feeling, but this is just personally for me. I feel like the puzzles that are included in this game do not are, are not um, logical. They're not really important given what Nancy is doing. It feels like the puzzles are there um, just to have kind of a puzzle sort of thing. There's not really chores, although you can do those too. You can look for money, you can um, cut flowers, you can dance at Club Michio to make money, all of these things, but you can get through the game without doing those, so I don't have as much of an issue with it. It's more just the lack of independence that we have in this game. It takes a lot of the excitement out of it for me. So unfortunately for Phantom of Venice, I have to give it a 5 out of 10 for entertainment and gameplay value. And last we come to music and vibe. I absolutely love the music in this game. The Italian music, or at least it sounds very Italian to me, is very well done. It fits in very nicely with all of the locations that we visit. It's just beautiful. And I think the thing that really um, breaks brings the vibe to the real forefront for me is that when Nancy is walking around in Venice, she hears people having conversations in Italian. I don't know what they're saying because I don't speak Italian, but the fact that Nancy's walking around and hearing these voices is just so cool. There's lots of just really nice background vibes, background sounds that make Nancy feel as though she's walking through the streets of Venice, and it's absolutely it's, it's just really exciting, and I love that the characters, this is another thing I mentioned in my walkthrough, they pay attention to what Nancy is doing in her surroundings. Nancy wears different clothes throughout this mystery, and the characters will, will comment on that, and I think that is so cool, because it, it makes it feel so much more realistic, and it brings the vibe to a whole new level when it feels that way, and I absolutely love it. So I give Phantom of Venice a 10 out of 10 for music and vibe. So if we add up all of our scores, we have a 9 9 for plot, 7 for characters, 9 for setting and design, 5 for entertainment and gameplay value, and 10 for music and vibe, which gives us a total score of 40 out of 50 and a final grade of a B minus. Now, this game is a more middling game for me. It's not one of my absolute favorites, but it is by no means one of my least favorites. It's right around the middle of the pack for me, which is actually what the last couple of games have been. White Wolf of Icicle Creek, Legend of the Crystal Skull, actually had the exact same score as this game. I think it's just kind of the middle of the series and the way that the games are structured that make them fun, but also a little bit forgettable in comparison to a lot of the older games and a lot of the newer games. There's just something about that middle period in the Nancy Drew series where they were maybe trying out a different kind of structure that doesn't necessarily um, put these games super far ahead for me. However, do I recommend playing The Phantom of Venice? Absolutely. I know for a fact that a lot of detectives really enjoy Phantom of Venice, and for many, it's one of their favorite games because of the spy aspect. If that's something that you're looking for and you want a game that has more structure like that and a little bit less free will, so it, it actually ends up being a little bit easier to kind of follow the instructions, then this game is definitely for you. If you are looking for a game with more character interaction, this is a great game as well. And if you just enjoy games with great graphics and a beautiful setting that really makes you feel like you're in Italy, this game would be an awesome choice. So do I recommend Phantom of Venice? Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching this review, fellow detectives. I'd be very curious to hear what you think as well, so post your thoughts in the comment section down below. I look forward to doing many more walkthroughs and reviews for you on this channel very soon. Thanks for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.